The weapon systems in Cosmoteer enable a wide variety of playstyles, each with their own strengths, weaknesses and quirks and allow your ship to either be a jack of all trades or be a highly specialized monster in its field of expertise. In today's video, we will discuss the advantages, disadvantages, quirks and recommended playstyles of ballistic weaponry and how to mitigate certain problems through at least decent design. Mind that I will exclude missiles as they are unique enough to warrant their own guide. So, why would you choose this weapon system? Ballistic weapons are your go-to option if you don't mind the hassle of ammunition, in exchange for high alpha damage, high DPS, penetration and the chance to start fires on the enemy ships. If you can supply the ammo fast enough, that is. Let's start with your basic cannons, which come in three sizes. Standard, large and deck cannons. They shine at lower ranges, where their high damage is not crippled by the low accuracy, low bullet velocity and chance of being intercepted by enemy point defense, thus supporting a very aggressive, brawling playstyle, as both lasers and missiles will outrange, but never outperform you given the right circumstances. What also plays into the brawling, up close and personal fighting style is the fact that cannons have higher durability than other weapon systems, so you should have some confidence in your hull and armor. I would even go as far as to say that the cuddly mindset becomes mandatory at later stages as you escalate in terms of DPS but unfortunately you have zero growth in range across those three basic turrets and also lose even more muscle velocity, thus making sniping duels except for the railguns almost impossible to win. Not only do you miss half your shots but the ones that hit will hit all over the place. But there is more to ballistic weaponry than just ramming into the enemy and letting your higher numbers win for you. In the defensive department, Ballistic has a flag battery, an oversized but highly effective point defense system that can take out missiles reliably at 150 meters. But be careful of its A, tendency to burn through ammo if used offensively without feeling much of an impact, and B, the rather narrow firing arc. If not needed otherwise, to hunt down very agile ships for example, I would advise to simply turn it into a defensive mode, as it's not able to really damage larger ships and you do yourself a favor if it just blasts enemy projectiles and missiles. And yes, in theory the flag has more DPS than a deck cannon, however the lack of penetration causes it to lose against the deck cannon, which has theoretically 1200 DPS less. But if you want even more damage per shot, shoot straight through the armor to the reactor and do it all at missile ranges the railgun might be right up your alley. Railguns in combination with sensor array basically allows you to load up on sulfur, click on an enemy base, go AFK and come back to a completed quest. It's more or less the answer to all the problems that your previous wall of lead couldn't solve. Even more, but faster lead. One more thing considering the railgun as it can be a bit tricky to get the most out of it. You aim with the hull of your ship. Unlike all other weapons which either have some tracking capabilities or a turret, the railgun is fixed to your current orientation, meaning that you can't aim for weak spots and expect your ship to align itself all on its own. Instead we will use a tactic called rail fanning. The basic idea is that you rotate your ship, therefore giving your railgun the chance to fire at the designated targets instead of just firing whenever an enemy ship can be hit anywhere. Two things. First. Set your launcher modules on a hotkey. This way you can quickly select them and assign new priority targets. Second, switch the firing mode to fire at target. This forces the railguns to only shoot at the designated targets and nowhere else. With that out of the way, we press 1 to select our launchers and simply select the component that we want to turn into a cemetery. Now select the ship and by clicking R we can rotate to give our ship the opportunity to increase the research and development staff problem. Also, don't overdo it with the accelerators. 8 are enough for double damage and 600 meters range. You will get a bit more damage and penetration with the diminishing returns, but 600 meters is the maximum distance. More won't help more. But all of this firepower comes at a certain cost. A cost that manifests itself in space, manpower and a loud noise followed by an annoyed sigh when the enemy hit a lucky shot or you screwed up your armor. Ammunition. 
Ammo is the most limiting factor for ballistic ship designs, as you either have to fight against a drop in DPS if you don't have enough hands for reloading those cannons, or DPS flatlining because you ran out of shells or sulfur. That in combination with the problem of storing ammo causes you to consider risk versus reward of having everything close by and risking an explosion or spacing things out with internal armor, thus sacrificing potential damage output for survivability. With all that in mind, can we streamline the process so that we don't have mountains of highly volatile ammo and still provide the cannons sufficiently? Yes, with the following setups. Fortunately, it's a rather simple numbers game with only three crew rolls. First, the math part. A simple ammo factory will give us two ammo per second. Two, on the other hand, will give us five ammo per second due to the 25% factory buff. 3 will give us 8 ammo per second, again 25% on 2 factories, and 50% for the one in the middle. Now the crew rolls. The gunners should never leave their post. Lost DPS when the gun is loaded and Private Stringbean is still strolling around in bumfuck nowhere searching for a bullet. Loaders only load, they do not supply the factories. The detour down to sulfur and or reactor is too long with the 50% walk speed penalty. Instead, we will let the suppliers do that. We don't need many of them anyway, but this causes our cannons to be constantly supplied as everybody has little or no distance to cover. With these numbers and crew rolls, we can start to make a few designs. The standard cannon uses 1.33 shells per second, which means that one ammo factory is sufficient. In addition to that, we will use three crew members, one gunner and two loader. This is the only design on the list that needs no suppliers at all. It just doesn't consume enough ammo on its own to stress anybody. On average we have a 334 DPS per crew member. Next up, three standard cannons. Two would just be a waste. We have the extra ammo, so let's use it. We have three gunners, two suppliers, six loaders. Combined 3000 DPS for the price of 11 crew members, thus 273 DPS per crew member invested. One large cannon. Less crew, less DPS with only 2000, but 7 meters of penetration instead of 5. Three standard cannons are probably more reliable due to the higher velocity and higher damage per second. You don't need 7 meters of penetration that early into the game anyway. Instead, switch to larger cannons if you can replace three standard cannons with two large cannons. Speaking of which, two large cannons with three ammo factories. This will most likely be a typical pattern for your frontline with point defense, flag and shields scattered in between those modules. The deck cannon. My personal favorite as you can turn your front into an impenetrable fortress. However, keep in mind that this thing consumes 10 shells per shot and is double barreled. So 20 shells for every happy noise. Thankfully, the DPS per crew is on the higher end again. And the fact that this monster is deck mounted makes it the best ballistic option in my opinion. Feel free to differ, but 6000 DPS, 9 meters of penetration and roof mounted for only 20 crew members is hard to top. Last but not least, the flag battery. I like it for what it is. A nice defensive option that does its job really well. But you do yourself a favor and support it with some shields. With 21k hit points it's rather sturdy, but the constant repair with hypercoils gets expensive over time. We can skip the railgun part of this design process due to the fact that the bottleneck will be your reactors and the energy consumption and not the ammo consumption. To summarize, play ballistic if you either want to be a brawler that just drowns the enemy in shots and fire, or if you want to be a sniper that can just delete bases. But keep these four tips in mind. First, replace ammo with sulfur and ammo factories. Two, make dedicated loaders close to the cannons and dedicated gunners somewhere where nobody else needs the beds. The gunners won't leave the post anyway, so travel time is irrelevant. 3. Don't be greedy. You will need all of that armor and the engines. You will not have enough crew members for cannons, ammo, engines and perfect shields. You will get damaged. Get used to it. And number 4. If you want to brute force early bases, 
Either invest into railguns, EMP missiles or try your best with shields. Especially ion bases are painful with pure close range ballistic setups. Since ions increase in damage, the closer you get and are dead accurate. I hope this video was at least halfway informative. If you have certain things that you want a guide to, feel free to suggest it in the comments section. Next time we will discuss something more expensive. <laughs>